back to the channel. So in for review, I've got a Tudor Black Bay Black. This is the ETA version, okay? Um, only had an eight month run. Uh, model number is 79220N. Um, this, in my opinion, is probably the best ETA version Black Bay out there. The, the um, actual size of this is 41 millimeters from side to side. It is uh, 50.3, round 50, from tip to tip. And then our thickness here is 12.6 uh, millimeters thick. It's running a 28-24 um, ETA movement, which Tudor goes through. I, I believe they changed the balance out to a free sprung, sprung balance. Keeps very good time. This one's like plus one a day. Um, I had the red version a long time ago. Um, shoot, probably back closer to when it was released. And that was a good timekeeper as well. So Tudor really modifies these 28-24 movements very well. Um, it makes them just an excellent timekeeper. So in my opinion, I mean, this over the um, in-house version, which I've had also, I would choose this. Um, this is mine. I picked it up. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. I'm, I'm kind of, this one's kind of a rough example. Um, but um, what I like about these over the um, the uh, in-house versions, you can see right away, look at that case back, or look at the, how thin the case is. So we're at 12.6 millimeter, 6 .6 millimeters thick. Um, the um, in-house version is around 14 millimeters thick, okay? And if you look, that case back is slim. So the in-house version will protrude. It'll come down quite a bit, okay? So you can see that. Um, there's the case back, Tudor, Geneve, you have your model number, serial number there. Um, this one, like I said, it's it's it is an older watch. It's a little worn. If you look at the Tudor rose, it's worn on the inside there, and then just the outside part of the rose is intact. Which, from what I understand, these do that. They come apart like that. Um, very nice um, sapphire crystal, kind of like a top hat. And I love the bezel action on a Tudor. 60 click, just perfect. I mean, the everything lines up. And just like all the other tutors I've had, my Pelagos and my in-house version of this has a different click when you hit the uh, 12 there. So very nice. Um, the dial is amazing on these. Just the texture of the dial. You'd see that. Tutor, I love the rose. What I love about these are you have the rose up there at the 12 o'clock and then you have the rose matching on the crown. They changed all that with the in-house version. You have Geneve below that, 200 meters, 660 feet, rotor, self-winding, uh, Swiss made. It's got the smiley face. This is very classic Tudor uh, and vintage Rolex. So this really harkens back to the vintage Rolex, vintage Tudors more than any other Tudor that they make. So I think this is um, going to be a collector's piece. If any Tudor becomes a real collector's piece in the future, it's definitely going to be this one. This is, like I said, eighth month, eight month run with these. Um, so I really think that these are going to be collectible over the years. In fact, they're pretty much collectible now. Um, if you can find a real good example, this one's decent. Uh, there are others that out there that are better. Um, but, um, this thing here, I think, um, was going to definitely go up in value quite a bit in the future. So it's very nice. Very, very nice. So anyway, there you have it, guys. This is the Tudor. Let me show you. Let me do a loom shot, and then I'll put it on the wrist real quick. I know I've pretty much reviewed this watch with my the in-house version that I had, but just wanted to show you this one. See what you guys thought. <clears throat> Dim the lights. There you go. See, awesome loom, as you'd expect from a Tudor. I mean, it's just super bright. Screams. They do very well with loom. And let me put it on my seven and a half inch wrist. Take the Marine Master off, which I love. Okay. There it is.
is on my seven and a half inch wrist. Love the profile on these. Like I said, they're pretty thin. They're, they're not um, as thin as a Submariner. The Submariners are, shoot, I think like right at 12 millimeters thick around there. But um, I'll be honest, compared to the in-house version of this watch, it's a big difference. And um, 50 tip to tip, that's the only thing that might throw someone off with a smaller wrist. It's got a big wing wingspan, but 50, it's not bad. With my wrist, it works very well, very well. If you compare it to the Marine Master, here's the Marine Master. <clears throat> so 41 on this, and then you have 44 on the Seiko. And the 44 on the Seiko, I mean, they say it's a 44, but it really doesn't wear like, wear like a 44, plus it doesn't even look like a 44. And then if you look at the thickness, do a side shot this way, there's the thickness of these two watches. So big difference in thickness. And it's kind of just the way they profile it. I mean, the bezel is very thin on the Tudor much thicker on the uh, Seiko, but the Seiko just doesn't wear as big as, as the numbers show. And you know, I can do a quick loom shot on both of these together side by side so you can kind of see that. Let's just do that and then we'll close here. So this is the difference between Seiko and Tudor loom. Yeah, the Seiko wins. Super bright, but you know the tutor's not far behind. So anyway, there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Goodbye.